My fellow citizens often ask me about whether our military could have gotten to Benghazi in time to save American lives. The last two heroes we lost in Libya in 2012 as a result of the deadly terrorist attack, former Navy SEALs Glenn Doherty and Tyrone Woods, were killed in action nearly eight hours after Ambassador Chris Stevens and State Department Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith were killed. Our select committee uncovered new information revealing a troubling answer. The military could not have arrived in time to save lives because no forces were ever moving toward Benghazi. Here's what happened. It was the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks and there was a scheduled protest at the American Embassy in Cairo, Egypt. Despite the date's significance and despite Embassy Cairo's walls being breached by demonstrators, no military assets in the region were placed on alert or repositioned. In fact, a special operations force, typically stationed in Germany, was in the middle of a long planned training exercise in Croatia. F-16s based in Aviano, Italy, were undergoing a scheduled review with components disassembled. Complicating matters, the refueling tankers needed for any mission were stationed in England. The fleet anti-terrorism support teams in Rota, Spain did not have their own vehicles or aircraft. They would have to wait for transportation to arrive from Germany. Other special operations forces were based in the United States. The attack in Benghazi began suddenly, about 3.42 p.m. Washington, D.C. time. Smith was confirmed dead within an hour, and Ambassador Stevens was missing. We now know neither one of these brave men could have been saved. When President Obama discussed the attacks with Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta shortly after 5 p.m., he gave very clear directions. Do everything possible to save Americans. After Panetta and his team identified the military assets that could be deployed, he also gave a very clear order by 7 p.m. Deploy, active tense. He did not say prepare to deploy, he said deploy. But nearly two hours passed before Panetta's order was received at about 2.39 a.m. Benghazi time, five hours after the assault began. By then, American personnel in Benghazi had retreated from the State Department temporary facility to the CIA annex where they continued to repel multiple heavy assaults. While Ambassador Stevens was missing and the CIA annex was taking fire, the White House convened a two-hour multi-agency teleconference from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. By the end of that meeting, a decision was made to deploy forces to Tripoli, not to Benghazi, 400 miles away. At approximately 11.15 p.m. in Washington, 5.15 a.m. in Benghazi, the third attack on the CIA annex began. Mortars hit the roof, killing Woods and Doherty. At this time, not a single military asset had moved toward Libya. Ultimately, the Americans in Benghazi were evacuated by Libyans, who got them to the airport and flew them to Tripoli. It is concerning that none of the U.S. forces ordered to deploy met their required deployment timelines. The Special Operations Force in Croatia eventually landed in an intermediate staging base in southern Europe 22 hours after the Benghazi attacks began. A special operations force from the United States arrived there roughly 90 minutes later. A fast platoon in Spain was picked up by a C-130 from Germany and arrived in Tripoli on September 12th, nearly 24 hours after the attacks began. F-16s in Aviano, Italy were not deployed for multiple reasons, including a belief by military leaders that they would not be effective. The bottom line is this. Leaders in Washington failed our men and women on the ground when they were in desperate need of help. We must ensure those who hold positions of responsibility do better for those who serve our nation in harm's way.